Ever since the founding of our nation, Americans have been debating national finance. From quirky editorials to fiery speeches, national banking has inspired increasingly potent feelings and has shaped a large amount of political ideology. Between Jackson's war on the second national bank and Ron Paul fighting to end the Fed, there was a Pennsylvania congressman by the name of Louis T. McFadden who was deeply opposed to the Federal Reserve System. Before the House of Representatives in 1932, McFadden launched into a 25-minute tirade concerning what he believed to be the sins of the Federal Reserve. McFadden's bottom line? End national banking for good. He accused the Federal Reserve of a wide variety of bizarre and corrupt actions that prompted his credibility to fall by the wayside. McFadden's speech is a chapter in the debate over national finance that has been forgotten but it is just as important as anything the Founding Fathers ever spoke of. In this film, light will be shed over how McFadden's rant fits into the 200-year financial debate, and it will be proven that McFadden had legitimate cause for alarm. The year is 1932, and Americans are trying to deal with the worst economic downturn the nation has ever seen. In mid-June, a congressional subcommittee is debating the federal home loan bill, legislation designed to make buying a home easier for many Americans. Louis T. McFadden is an opponent of the bill and rises to speak on June 10th. He asks the chairman how much time he has to make his case. The chairman tells him he has 25 minutes, and with that, McFadden begins. One would expect him to attack various aspects of the bill being debated perhaps propose modifications and suggest amendments, but that was not on the McFadden agenda. Mr. McFadden used all of the 25 minutes he was given and took up nine two-column pages in the congressional record, but amazingly did not mention the Federal Home Loan Act once. Instead, Mr. McFadden used his time to launch into an attack on the Federal Reserve System, calling it one of the most corrupt institutions the world has ever known. In his oratory, McFadden attacked every aspect of the Federal Reserve. McFadden's main point was that the Federal Reserve system had allowed American wealth to be sold to other nations, ultimately bringing about the Great Depression. McFadden began by saying that the Federal Reserve banks are not government institutions, but instead are private credit monopolies which prey upon the people of the United States for the benefit of themselves and their foreign customers. He then spoke about the monetary policy, complaining that every note was only backed by a small reserve, with the rest of the note's value being held in hard-to-reach or non-existent foreign commodities. This reiterates his major fear, that the Federal Reserve System allows for the U.S. to be a victim to foreign control. McFadden also submits to his colleagues his account of how the Federal Reserve came to be. Coming to the conclusion that the Federal Reserve Bill would not have become law if then-President Wilson was more knowledgeable in finance, McFadden predicts that the Federal Reserve is turning the United States into a coolie country in which manufacturing muscle will disappear in exchange for financial might. He asked for an audit of the Federal Reserve, an examination of government bonds and securities, and to simply destroy the Federal Reserve system. In his final statement, McFadden calls for a divorce of bank and state, claiming that the old struggle fought out in Jackson's time must be fought once again. After McFadden completed his speech, Senator James G. Strong rose to give a brief reply. Strong reminded his colleagues that McFadden had been chairman of the Banking and Currency Committee from 1920 to 1931, and, quote, did not see fit during that time to remedy any of the evils of which he now complains. However, this claim is not entirely accurate, given that McFadden had made at least one speech similar to his 1932 tirade while committee chairman, in which he called the American banking system a vast conspiracy against mankind. The reaction to McFadden's speech was simply astonishment. According to Mr. George Stimson, a newspaper man at the time, 
Washington went into a state of shock after hearing what McFadden had to say. We couldn't believe what we were hearing. Of course, they said right away that he had lost his mind. McFadden had been called insane before. A New York Times article from two years before, entitled, Mr. McFadden's Outburst, begins with the sentence, If Mr. Lewis McFadden did not happen to be chairman of the House Banking and Currency Committee, his broadcast of Thursday night would probably be set down as indicative of a mental disorder. McFadden was clearly an outspoken congressman, having previously brought up impeachment charges for President Hoover and the entire Federal Reserve Board of Governors. While McFadden did have courage to make this unpopular claim, it is important to note that he exaggerated on some points. McFadden claimed that the Federal Reserve had collected enough money to pay off the national debt several times over. This claim is simply inaccurate. The Federal Reserve profits between 1914 to 1932 totaled only $607 million, while the 1932 debt was $19.5 billion. In addition to this, McFadden accuses the Federal Reserve of financing the Bolshevik Revolution by paying for Trotsky's passage from New York to Moscow. This claim is based largely on circumstantial evidence and is disputed by historians. McFadden's message is still being heard today. In his speech, McFadden called for an audit of the Federal Reserve. Today, a group of congressmen led by Ron Paul of Texas are working to pass a Federal Reserve Transparency Act, which would allow for a reformed audit of the Federal Reserve. McFadden also explicitly stated that he believed the Federal Reserve caused the Great Depression. He was laughed at then, but over time has been confirmed. Milton Friedman, a prominent American economist, and Ben Bernanke, current Fed chairman, have both publicly stated that the Great Depression was a result of the Federal Reserve's failure to act quickly or effectively. What is more, McFadden predicted that America would export its manufacturing muscle elsewhere in exchange for financial might. McFadden clearly deserves credibility for this prediction. Today, the Made in China label is seen on a wide variety of America's consumer goods, as many American companies have products manufactured in China. While the financial center of these companies remains in the United States, the industrial might is being provided by China, giving credibility to McFadden's coolie country theory. McFadden's speech has since faded into obscurity. It is given minimal mention in history classes, and by many has been disregarded as simply a loudmouth politician venting his spleen. However, McFadden's speech is so much more than that. It is part of the 200-year debate over national finance and deserves more recognition. What is more, many of McFadden's claims have been proven legitimate over the course of history, giving him more credibility. While other congressmen were scrambling to find short-term solutions to the Great Depression, McFadden was trying to find a long-term solution to ensure that the mistakes of the past were not repeated in the future. He deserves recognition for this noble effort. Thank you.